Well, it's been two weeks. It's been full of, uh, I should, should say, it's been a busy two weeks for Boise, in the city of Boise. A major shakeup in the Boise's police department. That happened two weeks ago when the mayor asked the chief of police to turn in his badge. And for the first time since that shakeup, seven investigates heard from Mayor Lauren McLean about what led to that decision. She asked Chief Ryan Lee to step down just 24 hours after we published a story about nine officers filing complaints against him with the Office of Police Accountability. That office recommended in April the mayor put Lee on paid leave while a third party looked into those issues. She never placed him on leave. McLean admitted to seven investigates on Thursday she learned of problems officers had with the chief back in February. So we asked why it took so long to get to this point. Okay, well, you know the drill. State and soil your first and last name in your title, please. Sure. Lauren McLean, L A U R E N. Emails from an officer to Human Resources show that officer went to HR in January with concerns about their chief, Ryan Lee. HR sent them to BPD's Internal Affairs instead. Because Lee oversaw IA, they went to the Office of Police Accountability. The OPA provides oversight of police through separate, transparent, independent civilian reviews of police conduct, separate from BPD. Nine officers complained to OPA about verbally abusive behavior and name calling, with many retiring early because of the abusive climate. When officers went to HR, why did HR not investigate? A general employee has one place to go, and that's to HR. Um, officers have internal affairs, and then some officers went to HR, and then some officers went to Office of Police Accountability. So one of the things that we've learned from this is that we need to um, have a clear process of one place where officers go um, to share their complaints if they have them. Did City Legal advise HR not to look into these officers' complaints and send them elsewhere? We knew that there's a process through internal affairs where officers are supposed to go. They also have the grievance process with the union. And so ultimately it was determined that Office of Police Accountability um, could be the intake location for these complaints that were going to be made. In April, the mayor read the transcriptions of the officers' complaints. She read the memo from the Office of Police Accountability. And she says she followed one of the two recommendations in OPA's memo, get a third-party employment firm in to review. So we did that immediately. And what we asked that third party to do was review the complaints at face value, as if they were true, and tell us if any crimes have been committed, if any policies have been violated, or if there are other steps that ought to be taken. As a manager, um, I received that information back. No crimes have been committed, no po policies have been violated. However, it was pointed out that there should be some management intervention and coaching. And policies for all command staff in the department should be created. And so immediately after that, we directed the chief and his leadership team to begin working on policies for leadership staff in the department for accountability. Um, and then we began what I do when you have, when you have to do that, and that is ma management interventions, discussions about communication style, offering of support to help a leader lead more effectively. Mayor McLean wouldn't tell us who that third party was. Who was the third party that you guys hired? The, um, that is something that I'm pausing here. Only stating it was a contractor the city works with. The other recommendation from OPA, put Lee on leave while the third party reviews. That didn't happen. When you've got 400 folks in a department and nine people that have made complaints, imagine the impact that would have on any department. You need to invest and review those complaints, investigate whether or not they via they contain things that violate policy and procedure or law, and then make the decision. If it had been found to be true, I would have taken that step. What would you say to these officers who feel like they sat in the dark for months after they filed these complaints and went to OPA, and OPA really had no teeth in this situation, to be honest, what would you tell them about like whether their voices were heard or not? Well, um, I could see how that would be frustrating. And it's been very important to me to protect their identities and keep their own information that they included in, in these complaints private and to take into consideration the review that was provided to me. And these are personnel matters. And when we got that review, um, we took steps to begin to address the things that came out of that review. 
She also didn't place Lee on leave while Idaho State Police investigated separate prior criminal allegations against him. A tort claim accused him of injuring an officer's neck during a briefing in October of 2021. Lee never faced charges. Why didn't you place Chief Lee on leave pending the criminal investigation? That seems unprecedented. When you look at other departments, any time like an officer that we've seen is being investigated criminally, not just IA, they're placed on leave. So did you not have policies in place to, to kind of govern that? Or why did you decide not to do that? So it was an investigation and not a charge. And it's within the discretion of his manager and myself. And I opted because in this department, it was important to have leadership. We had no internal grounds to take action, and it was within my discretion, and I chose to have him remain on duty. Not only did the mayor work with Lee on his communication and management style, but she says the police union did as well. But the mayor claims their efforts weren't working. Then KTVB's story came out on September 22nd, and the mayor said she didn't think he could lead successfully when those personnel issues became public. The interventions that we were doing, um, others were doing as well, and we weren't seeing the results that we needed to see. I learned that the steps that we were taking weren't having the impact that they needed to have. And so I had to ask myself, um, is this the environment with this new information um, that will th enable the chief to be successful, that'll allow the department and the city to provide to the community what they deserve, um, and that will um, also provide the support structure and clarity on change and that our officers on, and the frontline folks that are protecting this community need and deserve to do their job. And it's for that reason that I asked the chief to resign. Did any of it have to do with the KTVB story that I heard? Well, that was the unprecedented step that um, private personnel issues became public. While the mayor met with city council leadership, she didn't brief all council members before asking the chief to step down. In hindsight, she regrets that. Mayor McLean says she learned a lot through this process and says changes lie ahead for both the city and its police department. What we know we want to have is clarity for accountability and where officers go one and done um, with the complaints that they might have. And if because ultimately, like this is a super litigious, complaint rich environment. It makes it hard to have these conversations that we want to have transparently because of the different um, personnel nature of the issues, the various places someone can drop in and make a complaint. I've directed our human resources team to do some assessments. I'll be um, joining the folks at City Hall West in the next couple weeks to have discussions about what's next. Morgan Romero, Idaho's News Channel 7. Boise City Council Member Patrick Bajan says council members got all the documents they asked for from the mayor's office and they are looking through them. Meanwhile, Ron Weininger stepped in as or has stepped in as interim chief of police until McLean chooses a new leader.